Hey, what is up, you guys? Coach Joey coming in, your fitness coach and mentor. And uh, it is Tuesday, July 19th. Wanted to come in with a little bit of a message for today, kind of stacking on to our nutritional series that we've been working on. So I'm um, cruising around town right now, running some errands. So I apologize if the uh, camera gets a little bit shaky, but uh, it is what it is. So um, what we're going to talk about today, so we've kind of gone through the process of talking about something every week. I think we're in week seven or eight right now. And uh, we've kind of laid down some foundational framework as far as trying to get your nutrition on track. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos, I uh, highly recommend that you go back and watch them uh, in order because in order for some of this process to work and help set you up for success, it doesn't make sense to do uh, like the third thing before you've actually become kind of habitual with your nutrition with the first thing. And here's the thing with this is it's a life process. So um, if you make a hiccup, it's not a big deal to kind of go back, start over, whatever the case is, whatever you need to do to kind of help keep yourself on track. But today's going to be a big one. Sorry, I'm drinking a Red Bull, sugar-free though. So this is a big one. <clears throat> Alcohol. Why is it not the best thing for your diet and your nutrition? Um, so it, it's kind of compounding in a couple of different ways. One from just the uh, component of the alcohol itself from a nutritional standpoint. And then two, when you talk about the effects that alcohol has on your decision making, right? So uh, first things first, one, alcohol is a wasted calorie. Um, there's no nutritional value to alcohol outside of the calories that it puts in your body um, so that's number one it's essentially like drinking soda now I agree alcohol is a lot more fun than soda so I'm there with you on that all right but we're talking about getting yourself set up for success um, so why is it important to uh, avoid alcohol when you're really trying to dial in your nutrition so number one is it's wasted calories meaning that uh, there's nothing beneficial from alcohol that comes to your body from intaking it besides you know having a really good time so that's number one the number two thing we're going to talk about is kind of how that affects your metabolic rate so as soon as you ingest alcohol um, once it hits your gut usually about 25 percent maybe a little bit more depending on how much food you have in your stomach or in your stomach starts to uh, immediately enter your bloodstream and then it starts working its way through your digestive tract now uh, once alcohol enters into the bloodstream it essentially puts a stop to your body using anything else for energy and the reason is is that glyco or uh, excuse me alcohol cannot be stored as glycogen in your body uh, even though I think it's considered a carbohydrate don't quote me on that um, so what ends up happening is your body's trying to figure out what's going on and it tries to find ways to process the alcohol that being said during that time uh, everything else that your body has going on as far as nutrition and glycogen gets stored because your body has no way to process the alcohol so it automatically starts trying to use it for energy um, don't quote me on this because I haven't done a lot of medical research but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's part of the reason why alcohol has some of the effects that it does on your body as far as the feelings that you have because uh, you know your body kind of changes the way that your, your metabolic systems are functioning um, so that's number two so it's not necessarily going to hinder you for a length of time but it's going to slow down the process so if you're somebody who drinks consistently let's say it's just once a week you know if you're you're consuming alcohol once a week that's one day out of seven that you're slowing your metabolic rate down from processing so it's not going to stop you from losing weight but it's it's definitely going to slow it down sorry if it's windy i'm in the jeep and i don't have doors on but so that's the number two thing it it, it kind of hinders the the body's ability to use stored glycogen or stored energy um, for energy when you start to drink alcohol so that's number two number three here's the kicker most of us could probably agree that with the consumption of alcohol usually the decision making slacks a little bit um, Usually I do a pretty pretty good job when I drink alcohol even though that I know this is something that could come up But for a lot of you you have a really hard time with this So you go out drinking you have a couple of drinks and then starts the bad decision-making not just with nutrition But with many other things so it's really really important that you try to set yourself up for success 
in the event that you do plan on drinking. So if you know you're gonna be going out for an evening, try to set yourself up, mentally prepare, and try not to make those nutritional mistakes. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Obviously, number one, if you're at home, just don't get bad stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, stay away from the pizzas, the hamburgers, the drive-throughs, the all the other things that you know could possibly contribute to bad nutrition and bad eating. So what I like to do if I know I'm gonna be hanging out at the house, I will usually cook an abundance of meat and usually it comes in the form of really, really lean meats. I like to cook just chicken breast if I know I'm gonna be drinking at the house because if I'm hungry and I start slacking a little bit, I could start just wolfing down some chicken breast. So that's number one, um, try to prepare that way. Number two that ends up happening is the treats that come up. So I don't keep too much of that stuff in my house to begin with, but if you know you're gonna be drinking, kind of eliminate it. I'll say this, Coach Joey's weakness is cereal, boxed cereal. So if I go out drinking and I come home and there's a box of cereal, I will get into it. But I don't keep Cocoa Krispies or Sugar Schmacks or Fruit Loops in my house. Usually I have two daughters, it's plain Cheerios, maybe some you know high protein Special K or something like that. On the very, very extreme side of things, I'll have some sort of Kashi organic cereal, but you gotta watch the sugars in those things. So that's what it'll do it. Top secret trick of Joey or Coach Joey right here, oatmeal when you get home. It'll fill you up. It doesn't have any sugar in it and it's not the worst thing in the world to eat. So, um, but that's like if you're gonna be around the house. Now, if you go out, obviously, obviously it's a little bit more difficult once you get out and around um, to try to monitor the kind of foods that are gonna be available for you. So, um, obviously there's a couple different options. If you go out and you know you're gonna be drinking with friends, just try to avoid places that serve food. So I know that, you know, we live in this great, beautiful city of Ocala but it doesn't have a ton of options as far as going out and doing that. So most people end up in a restaurant of some sort. But if you end up downtown, or whatever the case is, typically there's a couple of bars or, or watering holes that you can go into and you can have some drinks and you're not gonna be tempted by the food because it's just not available for you. So um, that's kind of the safest way if you're going out on the town with some friends. Just go somewhere where food isn't gonna be available. Now. When you drink, what should you drink? Best options versus worst options, all right? So if you're somebody who's gonna drink at the leisurely of having you know, one drink, obviously sticking towards a wine is gonna be your best option. They, you know, over and over and over, they talk about some of the health benefits of one or two glasses of wine. So if you're somebody who drinks, sorry, I got cut off because I forgot to turn on the do not disturb, so I'll string these videos together. But anyways, if you're somebody who could drink wine and you enjoy having a glass or two of wine, by all means do that. Second thing, liquor. Um, now, if you're drinking liquor, obviously on the rocks is gonna be the best way, but you should absolutely not mix it with anything that ever has any sugar in it. No juices, no sodas. Um, I don't remember if it's tonic, I think it's tonic has sugar in it. Stay away from that stuff. You can mix it with soda water, squeeze some lime in it, uh, diet sodas. Um, you know, people are gonna debate the whole fake sugar stuff, but anyways, diet sodas, no sugar if you're mixing those things. Next thing we start to talk about is gonna be the beer consumption. I'm not a huge beer connoisseur, so I don't know tons of differences, but I know that you know typically lighter beers are gonna be better off than down in a bunch of uh, darker beers as far as a caloric intake goes. So those are some decisions you'll have to make off of preference. But if you adjust accordingly, you can usually find something that's gonna work appropriate for you. And here it is, guys. At the end of the day, when you're trying to get your nutrition on track, it realistically boils down to what works for you, but don't kick yourself in the butt every time you think you make a mistake. Just get back on track and keep tracking along, all right? Don't forget, you guys, anybody who's at the gym, if you guys ever have any questions about nutrition, come by and see me. For those of you who aren't involved at the gym, I'm always open, the door's always open. I know it's a, it's a CrossFit gym. People think we're a little bit crazy and you can't walk in the door. You could walk in the door, come talk to me about nutrition. I'll be more than happy to help you out. No strings attached, all right, you guys? So Coach Joey out. It's a beautiful day out right now, July 19th on a Tuesday. Hopefully we'll see everybody this evening at the gym.